bars in our community and couples for Christ, named Mike Sorapio and Kirby Lavin. And the title of the song is God is Enough. Every time we sing this song, I can't help but to ask myself, do I really believe this? Do I really believe that God is enough for me? Can I sing this song if something happens to me or to my wife or to my children? What if my marriage falls apart? What if I lose my job or I get terribly sick? What if I lose my ability to reason, to think, or to speak? Is God really enough for me? The first part of the first reading, and also in our responsorial psalm, tells us that life is meaningless or vain if it's not rightly related to God. It would only be worthwhile when our life is based on God and on His words. This reminds us of one of the words of Jesus to His disciples. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his soul? A life without God and the values we identify in this world no matter how much energy we put into it, it is completely meaningless. Isn't it true that we tend to treasure things that has expiration dates? Nothing really lasts. Someday, either me or my wife will grieve the loss of the other. One day, I won't be able to do things that I love to do. And as I age, I could lose my memory, my ability, and maybe even to remember the names of the ones I love. Everything will come to pass. Now the second part of the first reading is all about weariness in life, which many of us do experience. We see awful weather conditions, droughts, floods, earthquakes, devastating wildfires, deadly viruses, the breakdown of our bodies, which is often the result of our own indulgences and excesses in work and in play. Our recklessness with mind-altering substances, alcohol, nicotine, and even drugs, and the unforeseeable breakdown or mishandling of our technologies. All of this can bring all of these amazing human achievements to nothing. Again, Jesus reminds us that we will never know the day or the hour when it comes. Brothers and sisters, the purpose of my reflection today is not to fill you with fear and discouragement, but with a realistic awareness of the ultimate purpose of living. Jesus in the center of our lives and we can find all of these answers in our gospel acclamation the alleluia or our gospel acclamation said I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except through me Jesus is the way he makes it clear that we won't define the way we're supposed to travel in this life, but instead we are to simply know, follow, and trust Jesus daily, and to walk in that faith that He is the way, that He would lead us exactly where we need to go. Jesus is the truth. Jesus can testify to the truth and teach the truth because he himself is the truth. In him, there is nothing false, nothing misleading, no fake news. Each of us are capable of knowing the truth, but none of us can claim to be the truth. There are so many things we still do not know and we do not understand, and there are so many things in our life that we did wrong. Yet, only Jesus is the truth. 
Jesus is the light. Jesus is teaching us what we really need to be concerned about. And that is our eternal life in heaven. The scriptures open speaks of life to come. We can stop chasing things that don't last forever. And to, and to chase what do last and have eternal significance. Vanity of oh vanities. All things are vanities, says Kohelet. What profit has man from all the labor which he toils under the sun? One generation passes, another generation comes. Brothers and sisters, we really need to know deeply that everything we have is because of Him. And all that we have is more than what we really deserve. We should have the certainly, certainty knowing that the truth is, He is the way. He is the truth. He is our life. Jesus is all is all we need. <clears throat> but let us not wait until we are standing before the Lord our Savior. But instead, believe it right now. In the prayer of Saint Teresa of Avila, she said, All things pass, God remains. He who has God lacks nothing. God alone is enough.